Yes, a very abridged and whirlwind tour. I've not covering a lot. So yeah, JPEG, image file, right? Well, JPEG itself doesn't necessarily specify the actual uh, file. It didn't specifies the image encoding. It has multiple ways it can be processed, anywhere between one and four components, including two, although I've never seen a two component JPEG image. And so, yeah. So yeah, more data, whoops, yeah. Common, so JPEG, because it doesn't actually contain how to contain itself, commonly found in JFIF files, and uh, other forms of files like EXIF and other methods of actually encoding data about the image. Because JPEG, the standard itself, doesn't even tell you how, what your components even are. It doesn't say how to interpret them. It lets you put in an identifier. So what is this JFIF thing? It's the JPEG file interchange format. It's a very simple uh, specification. It's only a few bytes long what gets embedded. And it pretty much tells you how many components, how they're actually encoded, the, what does pixel density units? Well, that can translate to things like 300 DPI. Although the pixels don't have to be square, really. Just put into the app zero JPEG marker. And uh, yeah, I do say that some writers will write four. Adobe does their own thing, CMYK. They embed their own separate metadata. So EXIF, yes best known for the camera metadata, but you can also uh, store TIFF or JPEG files inside of it. And starting with CS5, Photoshop even used it instead of JFIF for containing your uh, JPEGs. It's found in the first, typically the first F1 marker in a JPEG file. Orientation flag is fun because uh, in some cameras, like some of the phone ones, you rotate the phone, you take your photo, you look at it in some viewers, it looks fine, the others it looks rotated, and, and what happens in those cases is the image is encoded in the same method as the sensor, regardless of the orientation, it just flags it in EXIF as, hey, this is rotated, this is mirrored, this is both. And yes, again, it, it also specifies how a three-channel uh, compressed JPEG images that what their uh, components are. And yes, I know there's a few places I, men I mentioned YCBCR. And if, quite simply, you can get better compression with a similar sort of image quality by changing your channels from being red, green, blue, because we're more sensitive to Luma than to the colors. And you can convert it with simple arithmetic. I mean, yes, you'll get some loss through uh, math error, but say la vie, that's encoding. IPTC IAM, also mentioned earlier as a source of metadata, well, created by the International Press Telecommunications Channel, their intercha information interchange model, massive directory of data that can be embedded about landmarks and photographers, licensing agencies, and pretty much anything a press agency would want to know about some information. I mean, that's kind of what they are. Adobe found it useful and embedded it. First in App 13, but we now have uh, the more modern stuff as XMP, which is a great big blog of, blob of XML in another App 1 segment. And yes, what is XMP? Well, yeah, great big blog, blob of uh, XM, completely uncompressed XML right in your image file. If you're doing non-destructive edits, it can seriously inflate the size of your file. And if you're uh, using a tool that actually parses this XML file when you're reading it and doesn't skip over segments it doesn't care about, 
it can be rather slow. And some tools are rather strict about uh, when writing about what the DTD says. So, and you're wondering, couldn't this result in duplicated data between some of the photographer info in XFF1, XFXMP, and IPTCIM? Sure it can. I mean, we even have the same XF I, XF info in the binary form in two different parts of the file depending upon what the writer is. It's uh, interesting. So yeah, there was a metadata working group when they put together guidelines on how to uh, shuffle it around, determine which field should take preference between you know, XMP, IPTC, IAM, and EXIF. And you might be getting the right one. Depends upon your reader, really. So, now as for the image file itself. Right, so you start with your start of image marker. You know, this is a normal JPEG image file, so you'll have either an app zero or an app one, depending upon if it has JFIF or a X. And then it might have more metadata. That's pretty common. And there are things like color profiles and Hey, it's taken on this model of camera. This, here's the geotagged info. And then the data tables, like your Huffman tables. The actual compressed image data. Most of the time, depending upon the writer, you'll find more metadata after that. I've seen that with some Photoshop images. And then end of, end of image saying, yeah, we're done. Fun website, very fun website. It lets you uh, play around with uh, the bytes in an interactive editor in a website. You can play with the raw bytes in a JPEG image and you can see how the modification alters what gets rendered. So yes, you're, for the most part, any change you make will corrupt the file, but you can see how it affects what gets rendered. And yeah, the excessive detail slide. So. There's the RFCs for those various standards. Yes. We've got, so IT rec T recommendation T81. That's JPEG itself. JPEG file information for interchange format version 1.2. Yeah, that's JPEG. ITUR recommendation, BT601. That is uh, the conversion from RGB to YCBCR that uh, the JPEG specification of that conversion is based upon. <laughs> yeah, extensible metadata platform, XMP. There's a whole bunch of PDFs. Guidelines for Handling Image Metadata version 2.0, that was put out by the Metadata Working Group. Last I checked, I couldn't get to the Working Group's website, but since I already, I already had a PDF at work, and I, already, and I just plugged the link into archive.org and it popped right up. Yes, uh, there's, there was the request for the microphone, so that uh, people could hear any questions. I have questions. Yeah, so can you? Oh, sorry. Uh, a few years back, I don't know how long it was, uh, four or five years back, uh, there was a story about uh, viruses being transferred in JPEG files. Just curious to know where you would embed a virus in a JPEG. I didn't see anything about uh, executable code in it. Uh, if I were to do it, it would end up, if we weren't doing steganography and that sort of thing, I would actually just put it in the metadata. You can put executable code in the metadata? You can put anything in the metadata. So if you have a vulnerability in your metadata reader and you put the bad code into, say, an XF comment, the reader tries to interpret that and it, as it's decoding, boom. Any other questions? <laughs>